welcome to ArtCo Afternoon Arts. Thank you for joining me. My name is Amber Crimmings. I'm the artistic director slash cat herder over at Deep Ellum Art Company. And we bring these creative classes to you in the home because we know we have a lot of people that are looking for new ways to create. And this is a really fantastic way to help you connect with the arts, give us ways to connect with you and our artists, and you know, have a bit of fun with these classes. You know, when we're doing our regular operations, we do offer classes on site, not only taught by myself, but taught by a variety of local artists and school teachers in the area. And so we're gonna have a bit of fun today. Today is our Fry Yay. This is a really fun kind of, uh, project slash craft day and so we're going to play a little bit with mixed media and a little bit of uh, merging of different uh, ways to uh, you know showcase things because that's what we're doing as artists we're showcasing things we're representing things from real life in a variety of ways whether it's through the different mediums that we use or the different in a variety of ways that we interpret what we see. You know, you have things that go from the spectrum of ultra realistic to, you know, super ultra abstract. And so we like playing with, or I personally like playing with all these mixed medias because it's another way to think outside of the box and to play around with the mediums that we have. Because we do have a variety of people, I know, viewers that have a variety of uh, already tools in their toolbox on how to make art and how to create and so this is a really fun way to play with it. Today we're doing string art so I'm going to pop you down and we're going to take a look at some of the materials that we have for our string art. Now for this one I'm going to need a piece of wood and I just have a really thin little wood board. You can use a piece of like a 2x4 or a 4x8, just a little square, something that you can sink in some small uh, nails. I Look at my old Ziploc bag. Did I tell you guys I'm the crazy, I put all my materials, I don't know, I like Ziploc bags, y'all. I use it for a lot of my art materials. And this one has seen better days, but it has an ever so convenient um, access hole so that I can get my nails. I've got mine are kind of long for the wood that I have, but it's going to work. And I can use these in order to create some really simple shapes. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be interweaving some string within those shapes. So I started thinking what would be a really fun way to do kind of a mixed media project using this because this is kind of like in the craft area. But we can kind of pull it around and play with it as well. So I figured would be really cool since a lot of people, I don't know what happened to my music, since a lot of people, whoa, that's really loud. A lot of people are doing gardening these days. I thought it'd be fun to do a play on, say, flowers. Then I started thinking about flowers and what we use for vases, and I thought it'd be fun to do kind of like a mason jar type vase. So, in playing around, now this one I did a little bit of prep. This one, oh, sorry. Normally when I do projects with you, we do every step of the way together. But this one requires hammering and a lot of nails and a lot of hammer sounds. So I decided to do this one a little bit different, all right? So we've got our piece of wood here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this simple shape in drawing. a super simple outline shape. Now you can do anything you want. You know, you could do a super simple heart shape. Maybe you could do another heart in the center and then you could end up wrapping your string in between the two and here's me representing that string kind of going in between those two shapes yeah or then also what we can do with our drawing is we can also go in and play around with you know simple silhouette shapes so that we could create, I don't know, you could create a nice silhouette. We'll pretend I've got my hair in a bun there. And so we can go in and do a lot of different things and play around with stuff that we can end up doing our line work. And you know, it just kind of goes back and forth. Now remember too, if we do things like hard L's. Do you remember the math where you graph and you create straight lines from one side to the other? 
And so now what happens when I do the same thing from this point here, I create a really cool kind of nice section here. And so you want to make sure that you're playing around with these because this is going to help you play around with math concepts, etc. Alright, so I've got my guy drawn on here. I can either draw it directly on my wood or I can draw it on a piece of paper. And remember we talked about graphite paper and you can buy this pre-bought or you can make your own because you can actually color with your pencil on the back side of paper, dropping graphite on it, thus making your own graphite paper. And then this goes underneath it and then you can retrace over your guy and that's going to end up leaving a nice graphite mark on your piece of wood. This is going to be a fabulous way for us to go in and to actually nail our nails in here. So you see right here, I can go in with my nail and I can hold it and get my guy sunk in. This is really, really good for the ambidextrousness, really good for how to use tools. If you haven't used hammers and nails before, make sure that you're holding it in a certain stead. I'll give you a little tool 101 since not everybody knows how to use tools. If you use a hammer and you choke it, choke it up on the handle, you're not going to get very much force. So there's physics in force. And so when you swing it down here, what happens because this is so heavy, it's actually going to translate and enhance the amount of power behind the motion. So what may not be a really big powerful motion with our hand going forward really fast all of a sudden, it translates into a hard motion with the hammer because of the weight of the metal here and then the force over the length of the handle that is increased. Yeah, so you're actually, you're affecting trajectories here. And so when you actually nail in nails, you want to make sure that your hands all the way back on the handle because that's going to help you use that hammer more efficiently. And be careful with it though, if you're not used to nailing, make sure you're careful with your fingers. Um, if you are really bad at it and you're worried you're going to hurt your fingers, you can always get a pair of pliers and hold the nail with pliers while you're learning how to use the hammer so you don't end up smashing a thumb. This is really good tool 101 kind of stuff, and this is going to help you when it comes to any kind of projects. I was pretty lucky. I got to play around with tools since I was a, a little small child. I remember when I was young, we lived right by my grandparents, and my parents, their uh, first, first house they, were, they bought, the second house was the house that they built, and they built a two- a uh, story and a half because it had a loft, but it was all cedar A-frame and they built it by hand, y'all. Like with the help of some people, but they built this house. Anyway, in order to keep me occupied at like five, six, I was given wood and a bag of nails and hammers to play with. I survived. I didn't lose any fingers. It was alright. Okay, so if we do all that and we've got our nice guy done, then voila! I've got this beautiful kind of outline for, oops, I'll do it this way, for my mason jar. You see that, guys? So I've got a basic little outline for my mason jar. Now, I talked about flowers and gardening because this mason jar, I think I want to have some flowers coming out of it. So I might do two things. I think I'm going to paint some flowers on here, and then we're going to turn around and maybe put some uh, fake flower things in it, too. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here and do my painting. Normally, I would paint before I nailed all the nails, but I'm doing this in a strange order because you, the viewers, probably didn't want to listen to me hammer repeatedly for about 10 minutes as I got all the nails in here. So really, I'm looking out for you. But this is going to be a little bit more complicated for me because I'm going to have to try to paint this around my nails. I kind of don't recommend that. I'd recommend that you guys go ahead and play with getting this guy drawn out and put in there. Before, look, you can see my water bin here. I've got some thin little brushes here. I think I'm going to start out thin just because there's not much room for mistakes on the wood um, because it will definitely be fairly permanent. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to get a bit of green in here and then we're just going to Trying to get the stem 
drawn in. There we go. We'll have a nice kind of layer for this guy. I'm going to turn this around. And so I'm just kind of laying the stem out a little bit because I want to I want to have some nice stuff laid out there. And then I'm going to go in and I think I'm just going to do like some basic kind of reddish flowers. Ooh, that's really bright. That one looks darker. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to get some like basic flower shapes painted in. I'm going to do like poppy-esque kind of flowers. I don't know. We'll play around with it. Nothing too terribly complicated. Yeah, but we are going to go in and I'm going to get some nice petals painted in. I'm just kind of getting, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting some basic kind of red stuff put in here. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do another flower over here. And we're going to get this guy kind of put in. And I'm just kind of filling in some basic red right now. I'm going to go in and add some more detailing here in a second. So right now they just kind of look like red blobs. I want to go in and add my other stem. That way I've got this guy in. I'm getting this guy painted in. Remember, this is going to be a bit of a mixed media kind of project. A bit crafty. A bit, oh, a bit artsy. I didn't really mean to do that, but that's all right. We'll see if we can get some of that off. I'm going to go ahead and pat that. Immediately get some water on it. We may have to go in. We'll add something else in there. Remember problem solving. I should have been more careful with my paint pots. But that's all right. I can show you how to problem solve on this stuff. But I'm going to get most of that paint off. And then we'll let it dry. And then we'll play around with something else. Maybe we'll add a butterfly or a bee in there or something. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to start working on getting some darker attributes in my flowers going on. And so I'm just going to go in and I'm going to start adding some shading, okay? I'm using a bit of purple in here just so I can shade these guys up just a bit. And so I'm just taking a bit of purple and I'm blending it out. Just so that I can get a really nice dark area in here that I can turn around and blend out. And so we're just playing around with all these different kind of signs here. I'm going to go in now. I've got some bright, ooh, I don't have very much. By some, I literally mean some, but I've got some bright pink in here. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add some of this to my flowers. I'm 
going to get some nice color changes in here. And it's going to mix a little with this purple as I lay these guys out. And that's good. That's really what I'm looking for is a nice blend. So I'm just going in and continuing to hit my flowers, get these nice bright little pops of color. And I might actually want to hit just a little bit of yellow. Well, I'll wait for the yellow till I get to the stems. Right now we're still working on the painting of the flowers before we go in and do the rest of our string art. We want to go in and make sure that we've got some nice little highlights in here. And I'm going in and using my bright orange to kind of get all these guys in. So you see how my bright orange works for me? In order to add higher contrasts in there, so I'm going in. Just using it sparingly, you know, I want to make sure that I've got some really great blends in here. And I'm really just kind of winging it, y'all. Making sure I've got my nice bright ones. taken care of. Now I'm going to get some of my little bright areas in here. We're just going through. Getting all this stuff taken care of. Let me go back to my purple because I want to deepen up some of my Some of my darker areas here. That way I've got those guys nice and solidified. And then we'll just kind of leave those alone for a hot set. Well, no, I want to add some yellow in there. Just kidding. Let's add our last little highlights of yellow in there. You see these guys are kind of coming alive in there. I'm going to pull some yellow down my there now I've got some nice little yellow peaks going down my stems so those add as a nice little nice little nod and then I'm just going to kind of go in and get a couple nice highlights in here for some of my petals. I want my yellow to just be some really nice highlights that are just kind of in just a couple little spots here. Remember I'm using this kind of sparingly. We're just playing around. I'm playing around with some simple little flowers. Like these aren't too terrible. Really what's going to finish these off is going to be the little stamens, but my flowers are really wet. So I'm not really going to be able to do that fine kind of detail stuff. So I got to let these dry, but I also want to start on my string. So I am going to have you guys listen to the hair dryer real quick for a hot second, because we want to get these guys totally dried off. So I'm going to do this real quick. Right 
Okay, that's good enough for government work. So we've got our guy pretty well dry. So now we want to play around with some string. Because remember, we're doing string art today. So I've got all of these guys set in my wood. I've got my background flowers kind of painted in. So now I want to start playing with my string a little bit. And this is going to be the fun part. Because now I get to take my string and I get to actually use it in order to weave everything around. And I really think this is something that Dubes is going to end up really loving. So we're going to see if he's into this part. Now I've got my string right here, and I've got a really long string that's kind of going off at the bottom of our table. And so this is what we're going to use in order to start doing our project. Now looking at our project, let me move this out of the way. Looking at our project, we've got a really great mason jar. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tie off at the bottom because we need a spot that is going to be secure. So I'm going to tie a little simple box square knot here. And then I'm going to get this guy trimmed. And get my scissors out. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get the outside edge of our project taken care of. So what we're actually going to do is we are going to be going around all of our outside edges first before we crisscross on the inside. So I'm actually going to take this guy and I am going to wrap him loop-de-loop -loop around. Notice my nails, they're thin, they've got really small heads, and this is going to help me keep all of my string kind of together. So you see, I'm kind of doing it near the top, and that's good, because this is going to be my boundary line, um, and this is going to help me kind of get everything seated and started. Yeah, I'm going to actually push them down lower, because I may do this boundary line twice, because I think it looks neat, because it builds depth. And so I'm going to go around and go all the way around on this guy, just looping each one. And what this is going to do is this is going to create a great visual outside boundary. This is kind of like when you play connect the dots to figure out the picture, except you're doing it with string. Again, this is a really fun way. You could do this in order to create a logo sign for any of you that might be small business, your city members. You can do this with block letters, y'all, and make cool little signs for, uh, again, your business for someone's bedroom. Like these are all very, very fun ways in order to take this medium and technique and use it. And so I'm almost all the way back around. And so you can see, let me pull these other guys back up. And so I'm going to put you on the other view. Ooh, I got my camera down real low. You see the cat's really interested in this. And so what's cool already, we've got this really cool, like, three-dimensional look because we've got our painted flowers, and then we have our cool mason jar look kind of happening already. And you can tell the cat is very interested in this project. So we're going to continue to work. I'm going to pull this guy up again just a little bit so that you can see me working. Hey, you can even kind of catch the cat playing along. All right, so now I'm going to take this guy, and I'm just going to play around with doing all my different angles. And so what I'm going to do as I go around each nail, ooh, this nail is a little loose. If you hit a loose nail, that's okay. We're just going to have to hammer that guy back down. Can you believe he stays when I even hammer y'all? He really is the coolest cat. And so I'm going to take these guys and we're just going back and forth. 
Now you can do this in a very solid geometrical sense and you can choose to make this uh, extremely effective. Look at that y'all. We got a cool kind of almost star going on. And so I'm just taking this guy and I am doing all kinds of angles here. And I'm kind of trying to wrap it around twice each time because I think that really helps in holding it. Oops. Mmm, that really helps in holding it better. Perhaps I'm wrong. You don't have to do it every time. But, uh, each one of these has its own. So I'm actually going to do these guys in a spiral kind of form because I think that's kind of what these jars tend to look like. So I'm just going to do this string back and forth a bunch of, <clears throat> a bunch of times right here. So I can create that sense of spiral. You know how that you have that uh, rim where the lid screws on. And so again, this is a really fun way in order to, ooh, I ran out of string. Okay, so I need to tie this guy. I'm gonna get this guy kind of semi-tied here since he's so tiny and short. So we'll get this guy knotted up. Very carefully, you just knot up when you're done with your string length. And get that guy knotted up. And then we'll get him trimmed. And then we'll start a brand new one. I've got another string ready on the side. And so I'm going to take this guy and continue to play around with this. And now I want to make sure that all my nails are hit on, which is why I'm really not done yet. Because I want to make sure that I've got all these guys, they've at least got a string going around them once. Okay? You want to make sure you've got at least your string going around those nails at least once. So we've got this really cool, kind of like, mmm, three-dimensional slash our painting going on and so I'm just going around trying to make sure I hit on all these guys and that each one's got something going on here stuff. I'm going to get this guy kind of down here. And I'm going to continue to play around with my outside edges too. Make sure I've got those guys all nice and seamlessly taken care of. Make sure that guy's on there. I want to just make sure I've got a good solid line here. So I'm just kind of going around and getting that taken care of again. Because I think I hit on all these guys now. So 
just kind of finishing this off. Alright, so I'm happy with that. I think all those are taken care of in a way that I want them to be taken care of. So I'm just going to create a final knot here on this last nail head. And then I'm going to do another one right here on this final nail head. Make sure this is all the way sunken down. Nice and taken care of. And then I'm going to get that little tail cut off. So I've got this really cool kind of beginning right here for this. So I want to go in and I want to finish my flowers. I just need to add some tiny little stamens in there. And I'm going to do that with some white ink. i got to find my really super ultra tiny brush. So let me find that guy over here. This guy will work right here. So I've got a real tiny little round here. This is a 2-0 round. Very small. And so I'm going to use this with my white paint. Is my white paint even viable? I must have left this guy. I'm just putting some water in here. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to take my tiny little two. And we're just going to throw some little stamens in there. I'll make sure I've got enough water on there. I'm going to add nice little dots on there so that we've got Nice little flower, little flower bits going on. And so now we can play with all kinds of things. This is a really fun, like I said, a really fun project where we can mix in and do all kinds of mixed media. You know, I like to show you a bunch of wild and wacky things, and it's Friday, so we can kind of play with all those wacky things. And I kind of had in my grab bag of odd things even though I've got strings all stuck in it. Um, I've got these great little fake flowers that are really awesome looking and um, let me get that guy cut off. And these could be really fun just kind of hanging out of our little nice wall hanging that we've got going on. So I've got this really cool three-dimensional with my flowers drawn on there and I could always go in, since I created something that has a boundary, now I can go in and I can actually seat some fake flowers in here because the strings create a boundary and keeps them from going all the way out. So now I've got something that has both string elements, which are almost sculptural, plus I've got uh, other flower elements, and then of course I've got the painted elements on the inside. So this makes for a fun kind of fry project that uses a bunch of different techniques and plays around with a variety of materials in order to work and create something for us. Remember, I always make sure that I'm working on projects in ways that we can turn around and we can either simplify them or make them more complicated. I showed you kind of a complicated one when it came to the variety of materials that we used for this. But you can certainly make this super simple. You can just paint. You can just play with our string art. Remember, this is basic stuff that I get to show you guys, and you get to run with it and make your own personalized piece from it. I really like this because this takes me back to my handy days. Uh, brings good memories of me just sitting and hammering things into wood 
and uh, I hope that this was a fun project for you to explore and play with as well. I think Dubes had fun. He's busy sniffing all of the brushes. But of course, you know, all the things that we do, uh, if we do them with creativity in mind, I think we'll be uh, much better off in general. Uh, make sure you're taking a look at our schedule. Remember, on Saturdays, I'm going to cover up his cat butt. On Saturdays, we have our long-term projects. Tomorrow, we're going to be playing around with... Uh, we're doing collage for our next long-term project, a little bit of surrealist collage. So we're going to play around with that tomorrow. Remember, Saturdays, boys and girls, are at a different time. They're at 4 p.m., so make sure that you're checking this out with me and that we're playing around and uh, that you're creating with me tomorrow as well and catching the very first part of that long-term project. Thank you guys again for tuning in being a part of our Art Co. community. We always appreciate all that you do to help support local creative artists. Make sure you're tuning in tonight for our live music streams and that you're watching for our local musicians playing and bringing a good time to you in your home uh, with your family and friends. Thank you guys again. Make sure you're looking at our website and always checking us out for new updated info on when we could possibly be open and uh, what our future events are moving forward. I appreciate you guys a lot and I will see you 